Thank you, uh, Bethany uh, and Matt. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, be part of this uh, uh, panel. Uh, I, I will say that when, when Bethany uh, uh, called me, uh, or actually reached out to our group, said, hey, does anybody have experience with adolescents? Uh, I jumped in uh, uh, immediately uh, because in our practice, we, we probably do more adolescent hernias than babies for, for some odd uh, reason. There are a lot of hospitals in, in the area, so, so uh, uh, th that's just who we uh, we get. So we have a fair amount of experience with this, and, and I, I realize that uh, I've been involved in pediatric surgery now for about 50 years. That's kind of a crazy, crazy number. Uh, so I said, I can do this. I, I, I know the answers because I, I've got the experience. Uh, and, and so what I did was uh, look at the literature for about the past 20 years. Uh, there's some very nice discussions. This is not a new topic uh, uh, for sages. Uh, I'll take my mask off, sorry. Uh, not a new topic for sages. Uh, Gretchen Purcell Jackson gave a nice talk a couple of years ago. Todd Ponsky's actually given a couple, a couple talks. I looked at their talks and, and all their data. Looked at the literature, uh, and I, I have to tell you, uh, I didn't know as much about this topic as I thought I did. And uh, my initial bias uh, had actually completely changed. So you'll 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 see what I learned uh, looking at the literature. Uh, so, so all of this really comes from uh, from the evidence. I, I I don't have anything to disclose. Uh, I don't know if that slide actually made it. I, I, I put it in earlier today and, and they missed it, but I, I apologize. Uh, so I'm going to make some generalizations, uh, and all of these are taken from the data uh, in the literature over the last, uh, the last 20 years. So in general, uh, it seems that pediatric surgeons are trained to perform high ligations uh, of the hernia sac. That's, that's pretty much a given. So, so that, that's how we are all, uh, all trained, and we're sort of told this should take care of it for everything. Although you've seen, as Mac uh, described, it's, it's not always uh, uh, appropriate. Sometimes we run into surprises. In general, uh, most adult general surgeons uh, uh, perform uh, laparoscopic robotic repair today uh, using mesh. Uh, although I'm sure there's some who still do open, that the tap uh, type of repair seems to predominate in the literature, although there's a sort of a mixture of tap and, and tap uh, uh, techniques. Uh, and in most cases, direct and femoral hernia repairs vary with the surgeon's experience and training. So uh, while we don't run into them quite as often in uh, pediatrics, uh, the adult surgeons uh, see these quite a bit and, and, and probably uh, do mesh or, or, or some other repair. Now this is, uh, we actually do a lot of robotics, so this is an example uh, of uh, a high ligation using the SP uh, uh, Da Vinci platform. Uh, and uh, we do this for the umbilica, so it actually has a nice cosmetic result. This is very similar. Uh, to what was seen in, in the first uh, discussion. This is just a circumferential uh, suture on a relatively small hernia in a 15-year-old boy, uh, or young man, I should say. Uh, we, we like to make this uh, uh, circumferential. Sometimes if we don't get it tight, we'll actually put in two, uh, two sutures uh, circumferentially, avoiding the vas and, and vessels, uh, do a, a nice ligation until we're secure, and, and that's the cosmetic result immediately after. So, so you see it's, it's a very nice, uh, a nice result, and so it, it sort of solves the, the problem of, of uh, uh, no incisions because our patients don't see these incisions. Uh, it's a quick day surgery procedure. Uh, a little more complicated, this is a 15-year-old boy who had uh, uh, symptomatic hernia, uh, and this turned out to be uh, a large, a relatively large defect with the hydrocele of the cord uh, because of its size and because of the complication or, or, uh, of the uh, hydrocele, we decided to do uh, a uh, mesh type of repair. So here you see the SP robot uh, uh, mobilizing the peritoneum. Here you see uh, freeing up uh, the, this hydro seal of the cord, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll kind of free this up uh, as we go along, then ultimately put in the mesh uh, in the pocket that we've created and close the defect. And, and again, this is done through a, a single port in the umbilicus, so it's a nice cosmetic result. These are day surgical procedures, and, and they work, uh, work quite well. So this is kind of what we're talking about, one or the other uh, approach. Now, what is an adolescent? So I, I looked up the World Health Organization definition. So it, it, they describe an adolescent between 10 and 19 years. 
Uh, in most pediatric surgical practices, uh, we treat patients up to their 19th birthday. This may vary in some centers, but, but in that, those teen years, depending on the referral practices uh, and the uh, type of center, uh, clearly uh, uh, many adult surgeons get kids who are uh, older than 12 uh, in their practice, oftentimes because they've operated on the parent uh, or some relative, and they send them back to the adult surgeon to, uh, to treat their, uh, their adolescent child. Uh, but obviously both adult surgeons and pediatric surgeons uh, take care of this same age group. There was a, a look uh, by uh, Nick Bruns uh, from Todd Popsky's group uh, uh, as they evaluated the International Hernia Collaboration Group Facebook page, and they polled a number of surgeons with different scenarios uh, on a 16-year-old. And for a routine repair, normal BMI, small defect, uh, the majority of adult surgeons, 65%, uh, chose a mus mu mesh or a muscular type of repair. Uh, whereas 86% of the pediatric surgeons did what we're trained to do, a high ligation. For large defects, 100% of the adult surgeons chose a mesh type of repair, and interestingly, about 80% of the pediatric surgeons chose to do an adult uh, type of repair, uh, presumably uh, uh, mesh uh, in both cases. I didn't even know my colleagues knew how to do mesh repairs, except maybe some of the more recent ones uh, uh, get that. Now, all things being equal, uh, this is a, a paper from 2018. Uh, Chris uh, and his group uh, at the University of Michigan did a phone survey. Uh, and this was a 16-year review from a single center experience uh, in patients ranging from 12 to 25 years. So it's a little bit older than adolescents, uh, but, but it certainly covers that age group. 67% of the patients uh, were repaired by general surgeons in this uh, series. 33% uh, of the patients uh, were repaired by pediatric surgeons. Uh, this is 1,280-some patients, as I recall. And the overall recurrence rate was about 5.7% uh, with a mean recurrence, uh, mean time to recurrence at about three and a half years. So clearly, uh, many of these recurrences occur late. And so you have to uh, uh, not be so quick to jump uh, and say, okay, in a year there's no recurrences, our repair is great. Uh, basically, the bottom line, there was no significant differences in the recurrence rate or the complications between either a mesh-type adult repair or the high ligation repairs done by the pediatric surgeons. Uh, and so it probably doesn't make a difference, at least in this group uh, with this single center experience. It didn't make any difference what type of repair that you did. Uh, none, nonetheless, there's this wide range of recurrence rates and some complications reported in, in adolescence. So, you know, it, it occurred to me that we can probably do better and, and maybe be a little bit more selective. So, so that was uh, was my goal as, as I moved along. Now. High ligation was first described in 1887, and uh, you've heard a little bit about technique, but basically it can be done open, can be done laparoscopic, can be done robotic. These are all in the literature. Uh, it appears that uh, overall the high sac ligation uh, poses no increased risk for the development of an inguinal hernia as an adult. So, so it's a sound repair in, in most cases. Uh, comparable recurrence rates, as we've talked about, to adult type of repairs, 0 to 6.3 percent, are as reported in the literature. There is a higher recurrence uh, with comorbid uh, conditions, uh, cardiac defects, GI problems, uh, and interested in the use of absorbable or braided sutures. Uh, so most of us tend to like more permanent type of sutures uh, that are, that are non-braided uh, for our repairs. Uh, it appears in the literature uh, that adding a sac disruption uh, and or suturing the muscular arch uh, may decrease the rate of recurrence. I'll, I'll add transfixing, uh, 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 transfixing the, uh, the hernia sac as was described uh, in the, uh, the, the first talk. Now, when do direct hernias develop? So this is kind of an interesting uh, uh, study, uh, uh, relatively recent, uh, 2019. Uh, Holzmacher uh, looked at 1,620 adolescents, 18 years or younger. Uh, there were 253 patients in, in the 18 to 25 uh, year old age group, and uh, they they looked at by 
groups, 11 to 14, 14 to 18, 18 to 21, the incidence of the appearance of direct hernias. And as you can see, this increases from 7% to nearly 10% to, uh, uh, to just shy of 30%. So uh, it suggests that the emergence of direct hernias in adolescence uh, sort of represents a transition from a pediatric type to an adult type uh, of uh, inguinal floor uh, physiology in, in some fashion. And, and so clearly, uh, it, it may not be sufficient just to assume in the 16, 17, 18 year old that I can do this high ligation uh, and not expect any re recurrences or, or complications. Uh, and we actually have had uh, the experience where we have fixed an indirect uh, inguinal hernia uh, and then had the patient come back with a direct hernia in this adolescent age group. So, so that kind of uh, helped us uh, shift our thinking a little bit, uh, and, and I'll explain that at, at the end. Now, when you have a recurrence, it seems that uh, there are a couple optimal type of non-mesh repairs for recurrences uh, that have been successful in the literature. Uh, one being, you know, go ahead and reoperate and remove the sac. And we do that in some uh, open cases. Uh, you know, in open inguinal hernias, it wasn't mentioned, but when we do them open, some surgeons take the sac out, some surgeons leave it in. Uh, it it kind of depends on, on uh, uh, the situation. There are instances where we do a high ligation, leave the sac in, and the patient comes back with a recurrent hydrocele. Uh, but but you know, most of us kind of leave that sac alone, uh, but, but uh, clearly uh, there may be an added risk. There are some reports of a muscular arch repair with non-absorbable sutures uh, for this, uh, successfully reducing uh, the uh, recurrence rate. So this is just a matter of disrupting the sac at the internal inguinal ring, putting a couple sutures to kind of close that, uh, that muscular arch and then doing a purse string. Uh, so that seems to be uh, an option. There is the issue of chronic postoperative inguinal pain. And uh, this is seen probably more with uh, adult type of patients, uh, but we certainly see it in some adolescents. There doesn't appear to be any difference between TAP and TEP repairs. Uh, the risk factors uh, for the occurrence of chronic postoperative inguinal pain are a young age at repair, preoperative response to experimental heat stimulation, and none of us do that in practice, but this is what they found experimentally. Uh, early pain intensity, so when they have severe pain postoperatively, that, that suggests that they're going to have chronic pain. Females have this more often than males, and a history uh, overall of chronic pain. So these are the groups that tend to have uh, chronic postoperative pain. Uh, when we're talking about adolescents, uh, the, the certainly uh, they appear to be an increased risk group of, for this. Now. As we looked at the literature, it appeared that size matters, uh, and in hernias as well as other things in life. Uh, and so what we have done uh, is taken a, the ruler that comes with uh, the scalpels or the marking pen uh, set in the surgery. Uh, we've cut it longitudinally down, uh, uh, down the center and cut off a length, we stick it inside, and we actually use that to measure the defect. And so in this, this particular, uh, the diameter of this hernia uh, is about one and a half centimeters. So things are magnified, so it's kind of hard to appreciate. Sometimes uh, th things look bigger than they may be uh, in actuality. So we actually like to measure it uh, and use that as a guideline. And with this in mind, and with this, the use of this, uh, we developed an algorithm for what we believe uh, is the optimal uh, management for adolescents uh, with, with hernias, uh, and, and this is sort of what we came up with. So if we have an indirect hernia, if the defect is less than one and a half centimeters, we just do a high ligation. And whether you do it uh, laparoscopically or robotically or however you choose is certainly up to you. Uh, if it measures between one and a half and two and a half centimeters, we think, uh, again, based on the literature and our own experience, uh, that some sort of sac disruption uh, or transfiction uh, or uh, uh, 
basically is is important. So, so for this particular group, we'll basically just do a, disrupt the sac and then go ahead and put the purse string in and do our hair ligation. Uh, over two and a half centimeters, it's greater than an inch as measured, uh, we prefer a mesh repair, uh, either tap or tap. We, we, we like the tap repair in, in our hands. Uh, and for a direct hernia uh, or femoral hernia, uh, we use a, a mesh repair. So, so we've embarked on a, on a, uh, a prospective study using this uh, type of algorithm. So hopefully in a, in a year or so, I'll come back and kind of give you uh, our results looking at the recurrences. But, but based on our understanding of what's in the literature, what's been reported, uh, this appears to be a, a very rational approach. Uh, and so this is how we, we now uh, are moving forward. Thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, present this information.